Ah. Well, I must be returning to Donwell, I suppose. Oh, no, please, Mr. Knightley, do not leave us just yet. Father and I must spend all our days alone together now, so we shall be more than ever grateful for your company. Emma! Emma, my dear, the door! The door, my dear, if you'll be so good. There's a most dreadful draught round my feet. I say Mr. Knightley will be more than ever welcome, Papa, now that we are to spend our days alone together without Miss Taylor. No. Mrs. Weston, as I suppose I should now call poor her. Poor Miss Taylor, poor Miss Taylor. What a pity it was that Mr. Weston ever set eyes on her. Yes, it is a sad business indeed. Oh, come, Weston's an excellent fellow. He's been a widower too long. He'll make her the admirable husband that she deserves. But you and Emma will lose... Housekeeper, governess, companion, and friend, all at one stroke. It's poor Mr. and Miss Woodhouse, in my opinion. Especially when one of them is such a fanciful, troublesome creature, Mr. Knightley. Come, speak your mind honestly, sir. That's very true, my dear. I'm afraid I am very troublesome and fanciful these days. Oh, dearest Papa, as though we could possibly mean you. No, Mr. Knightley was merely pursuing his self-appointed task of putting me in my place and keeping me well aware of my faults, were you not, sir? I, I no said nothing. It was you. No easy take upon yourself, I grant you. But never mind. We understand each other, do we not? Have another piece of wedding cake. It really is delicious. No, thank you. Emma, Emma, my dear good child, whatever are you doing? There will be no Miss Taylor to look after you now, don't forget, if you become unwell. Oh, Father, when have you known me have one day's indisposition since I was a child? I have an extremely robust constitution. Have I not, Mr Knightley? I must say I think you have, Emma. Dear Emma bears everything so well. But she will miss poor Miss Taylor more than she imagines. It's quite impossible that she should not. But she knows how much this marriage is to Miss Taylor's advantage. It really is a most satisfactory thing for all concerned, I should consider. Thank you, Mr. Knightley. I take that as a great compliment coming from you, because I flatter myself that I was chiefly responsible for the match. Oh, come now, Emma, really? Oh, yes. Ever since the day that Miss Taylor and I first met Mr. Weston in Broadway Lane, and because it began to mizzle, he darted into Farmer Mitchell's and brought his two umbrellas. From that very moment, I planned the match. Oh. <laughs> you may smile, Mr. Knightley, but it's the truth. My dear, I wish you would not make matches, for they are most troublesome and wretched affairs. Oh, I promise to make none for myself, Papa, but I do not promise to restrain myself on behalf of others because it's the greatest amusement in the world. And after such a success... Success? What do you mean by success? Why do you not call it a success, then? that two such admirable and well-suited people should come together. Yes, but success, I suppose, is some kind of endeavour. Now, am I to understand that you have been labouring these past four years to bring this match about? It's a fine occupation for a young lady, I must say. Mm, Mr Knightley dearly loves to chide me as though I were still in the nursery, do you not, sir? Indeed, I do not. Oh, yes, you do. But I would have you know that I am no longer of an age to be made to stand in the corner for talking too much. <laughs> Happily, for I should no doubt be there a great deal, I'm afraid. You merely said to yourself one day how delightful it would be were Mr. Weston to marry Miss Taylor. And as it happened, he did. Now, what's there to be proud of in that? You merely made a lucky guess, that's all. And have you never known the pleasure of a lucky guess, Mr. Knightley? Certainly. But if you ask me, one is likely to do far more harm than good by interference. Dear Emma never thinks of herself whether it's good to be done to others. But pray, my dear, no more matches, please. They break up one's domestic circle most grievous. Only one more, Papa. Now restrain yourself, Emma. Just because you're in need of a new source of entertainment, that's no good reason for turning your attention in some other poor fellow's direction. Have no fear, Mr. Knightley. I would never presume to perform my good offices upon your behalf. Ha! Ah, indeed, I don't know. No, the person I think most in need of help in that direction at the moment is Mr. Elton. Elton? Elton? What I about Mr. Elton? thought as he was joining their hands together today, poor young man, he would so much have liked someone to be performing the same office for him. Poor young man, indeed. He has been here for nearly a whole year now, and I hear he has fitted up the vicarage exceedingly well. And a clergyman, more than most men, needs a wife to support and sustain him. But there are so few young women in Highbury who are in any way suitable. But never mind. I shall keep my eyes open. You may depend upon it. Harriet, my love, leave your bonnet alone. Oh, yes, Mrs. Goddard. You look very well, my child. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Goddard. Mrs. Goddard, how nice of you to call. Oh, 
Good morning. Good morning, Miss Woodhouse. Miss Woodhouse, may I present Harriet Smith? Harriet was one of my pupils, but now she helps me with some of the younger girls. Well, do sit down, Miss Smith. Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, the girls were so delighted with the cake and the bonbon. Were they not, Harriet? Oh, yes, Mrs. Conrad. It was so sweet and kind of you to think of them in that way. Not at all. My father does not eat wedding cake. In fact, I am sure he would be most alarmed if he knew what I had done. I do hope none of the children suffered as a consequence. Oh, good gracious, no, Miss Woodhouse. Did they, Harriet? Oh, no, indeed, ma'am. Good. I'm so glad. I'm sure he would never have forgiven me. And um, have you seen the happy couple since they returned, Miss Woodhouse? Not yet, but I hope to very shortly. I understand that Miss Taylor, had, oh, Mrs. Weston, I should say, had a most agreeable letter from Mr. Weston's son, Mr. Frank Churchill. So I hear. A truly handsome letter, so Miss Bates said. Ah, Miss Bates. So, perhaps we shall see him in Highbury at last. Yes, providing his guardian, Mrs. Churchill, is well enough to permit him to leave Yorkshire. Have you had the pleasure of meeting him, Miss Woodhouse? No, never. <laughs> I confess he's become something of a legend, has he not, Harriet? Yes, Mrs. Goddard. But Miss Bates is of the opinion that he's sure to come, now that his father has a regular establishment here, so to speak. Indeed, it would hardly be polite to the second, Mrs. Weston, if he did not. Uh, well, that is Miss Bates' opinion, anyhow. Oh, well, I only hope the poor young man is sensible of it, that is all. But this gives me an opportunity to issue you with an invitation, Mrs. Goddard. My father and I are giving a small party next Wednesday for Mr. and Mrs. Weston. Quite informal, of course, so please forgive my not writing to you in the normal way. Do say you can come. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, how delightful! Yes, indeed. And Miss Smith. Or may I be allowed to call you Harriet? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, you don't really and mean... And perhaps if she could be spared, Harriet could help me with some of the preparations. There are always a hundred and one tiresome little tasks on the day one gives a party, are there not? Harriet! Oh, you'll find her most excellent to run errands, Miss Woodhouse. And if you make yourself quite clear, she will do her utmost, I'm quite sure, won't you, my dear child? Oh, Harriet, you lucky, lucky girl! What do you say? Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Cox? Yes? Uh, Miss Bates? Bates. Emma, she's an admirable woman. You can't leave her out. Yes, but she's such a great talker upon little matters. Very well, then. Miss Bates. There. That makes 26 in all. Mr. Frank Churchill comes. Yes, but I think you'll find he will not. Oh, why do you say that? I have no particular reason. It's merely my opinion. Emma, my love, I'm worried that you should require the ladies to leave their bonnets and so on in the night nursery. We cannot have them all catching cold down that long passage, poor things. Very well, Papa. Well, that makes 25 in all. Uh, can you think of anyone I may have forgotten? Elton? Oh, no. I have him down already. The Coles? Oh. You sound unenthusiastic. I really do not think I need to ask them. And what, pray, is wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Cole? There is nothing whatever wrong with them. It's just that I do not wish to include them in my party, that is all. There. The list is closed. Very well. So be it. Don't forget to ask Cook to prepare a bowl of gruel. There are sure to be some, especially among the ladies, who cannot digest rich food at night. Very well, Papa. I won't forget. Should you need any help on the day, I'm sure that my housekeeper would be willing to oblige. No, thank you, Mr. Knightley. Now, how did I make it only 25? Yes, but I'm a good manager. There you are. You surely cannot do without any assistance, whatever. Thank you, but I have Harriet coming for the day. Ah, I had forgot to cross off Mr. Frank Churchill. And who, pray, is Harriet? Harriet Smith is an old pupil of Mrs. Goddard's and a thoroughly excellent and deserving young woman. Aha, I see it all. Harriet Smith, whoever she may be, must be the next to receive your attentions. Oh, Emma, Emma, you're incorrigible. Mr. Knightley, if it pleases you to make sport of me, pray feel free to do so as much as you wish. I can guarantee it will make not the slightest difference to my conduct. I'm quite sure of that. Ah, Williams, we will have dinner at five. Yes, Miss Woodhouse. And Mr. Knightley will be staying. Indeed. Thank you, Williams. Oh, Mr. Knightley. Oh, Mrs. Bates. Oh, I'm 
so sorry your mother did not feel able to come. Oh, she's so disappointed. I cannot tell you how grieved she is. I have never seen her so grieved upon any matter before, scarcely. And that's the truth. She said, do tell Miss Woodhouse how sorry I am. I was only saying to Mrs. Goddard... Emma, dearest, dearest Emma. <laughs> Mrs. Weston, there, I have remembered to call you by your right name at last. Oh, but you're looking well. You're looking very well indeed. Ain't I looking well too, Miss Emma? Indeed you are, Mr. Weston, but then you always do. I was hoping I might have my son with me. But at the last moment, Mrs. Churchill was unwell once again. He was obliged to put off his visit. I fear she must be a somewhat exacting aunt, Emma. And not only because she insisted that he change his name to hers. Nonsense, my love. She's been extremely generous to the boy. I bear her no ill will at all on that score. I know you do not, my love, because you are too good-hearted. Oh. Nevertheless, I think it shows a want of feeling. Well, never mind, Mr. Weston. We must postpone the pleasure of meeting your son until another occasion. It is enough that you should bring your dear wife back to us, for we've missed her sorely. My father is quite heartbroken, but you must come and meet him this instant. He will not be parted from you a moment longer than is necessary. Fine girl. Fine girl, eh, Knightley? Yes, indeed. Your wife dotes on her. Dotes on her, she does. Yes. Well, Weston, no need to ask how matrimony is suiting you, I'm ah. sure. <laughs> you should try it yourself, man. <laughs> Splendid physic, I can assure you. Yes, so my brother is always telling me... But one in the family is enough, I fancy. Oh, that's what you say now, but you wait, eh? Just you wait. <laughs> oh, Miss Bates, let me propose your venturing on a lightly coddled egg. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Woodhouse. Really extremely kind. But I think if I might be a permitted... A very soft uh... egg is not unwholesome, you know. You take no harm from that, I can assure Papa. you. Oh, excuse me. Miss... Taylor, oh, what a delight it is to see you safely back. And it's the greatest happiness to me to be back here, Mr. Woodhouse. You were both so kind to me. I'm sure I shall always think of this as my true home. Oh, but you look pale. Emma, my dear, don't you think that she looks pale? No, Papa, to be truthful, I do not. It's a journey, perhaps. <laughs> a chair, a chair, Emma, for poor Miss Taylor. Mrs. Weston, Papa, do please try to remember. Oh, but your hands are cold. Are they, Mr. Woodhouse? Mm, come over here by the fire. Emma, dear, a little wine for poor Miss Taylor. Mrs. Weston, Papa. I'll tell the servants to put a drop of wine in a tumbler and fill it up with boiling water. That can do you no hurt, I promise you. Richard, <laughs> kind, kind, Mr. Woodhouse. Dearest Papa, he will be so happy now he has you to make a fuss of once more. Richard will bring you your wine in a few moments. Thank you, Mr. Woodhouse. Oh, Miss Taylor, the anxiety has been almost too much for you. Oh. all the long journeys I've I think this is what you require, is it not? Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. But you must not stay over here by yourself. You must come and meet people. Please do not concern yourself on my account. I'm quite happy. Mr. Elton, the very person I was looking for. Miss Woodhouse, may I be permitted to compliment you on such a splendid gathering? Thank you, Mr. Elton. And in return, may I introduce you to someone whom I would particularly like you to meet? Not that such admirable gatherings are anything but the rule at Hartfield, I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. Elton. Harriet? Yes, Miss Woodhouse? Mr. Elton is already well known to you in the pulpit, I dare say. But I expect you are not quite yet so well known to him. May I present Miss Harriet Smith? Your servant, ma'am. How do you do, sir? Mr. Elton, Miss Smith has nothing to eat. Please be so kind as to escort her to the buffet. Oh, yes, certainly, Miss Woodhouse. There, Harriet. I leave you in his charge. May I fetch you a plate, Mr. Elton? Oh, uh, thank you. And a fork. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, what a delightful party. <laughs> thank you, Miss Bates. Yes, I was only saying to Mrs. Weston just now there's something quite unique about a Hartfield party. Oh, you're too kind. Quite unique, I said. That's the only way to describe it. <laughs> but is it not a shame about Mr. Frank Churchill? Yes, is it not? Poor Mr. Weston, I do so feel for Please him. Please excuse me. Oh, <laughs> Emma. 
I find that I already know something of your new little protégé, Miss Smith. She was a, a pupil of Mrs. Goddard's for some 10 or 12 years, was she not? She was. Ah, I thought as much. Hmm. And if you are about to tell me that she is somebody's natural daughter and that her parentage is unknown, I am already well aware of it. Thank you, Mr. Knightley. Though, in my opinion, she is quite obviously the child of a gentleman. Dear Emma, you fly off on your hobby horse as usual. I was about to say no such thing, because until this moment, I did not even know it myself. However, it doesn't concern me. She's a very pleasant-looking girl. It's quite enough for me. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Now, all I was about to say was merely that I find that I know her by sight, because she often stays with some tenants of mine, the Martin family at Abbey Hill Farm. Miss Smith stays with farming folk. Oh, really, Mr. Knightley, I feel you must be mistaken. Mrs. Goddard would never permit it. Why not? The Martin girls are admirable young women. I have a very high opinion of the whole family. Then that just goes to prove my point, does it not? Harriet is a fine girl with a sweet disposition. All she needs is a little polish and a few additional social graces, which I fear she will not learn on a farm. Oh, Emma, Emma. I see you are quite prepared to put me in the wrong. You know, you quite mistake me, Emma. Well, I refuse to be lectured this evening. Call in upon us one morning, and you may go through the whole catalogue of my faults over a glass of sherry and a biscuit. If indeed you could spare so much time as it would doubtless require, excuse me. Emma, Emma, my dear good child, that poor Miss Smith with that great plate full of chicken. Now, don't eat it, my dear, don't eat it. Now, put it back and let me get you a little jelly with some trifle. It is quite all right, Harriet. You just carry on as you were. But, Emma, my dear, all that mayonnaise sauce, the poor child will suffer from it most dreadfully. No, Papa, she will not, I assure you. But it is no good grinning at me like this. Ah, Miss Woodhouse, is not Mr. Weston, the kindest man alive, would you not say? Excuse me, Mr. Elton, you have abandoned poor Miss Smith. I'm surprised at Oh, no, Miss Woodhouse, I can assure you. Mrs. Weston, I don't know what your opinion may be of this new intimacy of Emma's, Harriet Smith, but I think it's a bad thing. Oh, but why, Mr. Knightley? Because neither of them will do the other any good, in my opinion. Indeed, you surprise me. Emma cannot but do Harriet good. And by providing her with a new object and interest, Harriet may well do the same for Emma. Let this not be the beginning of one of our disagreements on the subject of Emma, Mrs. Weston. Certainly not. But I think perhaps you do not realize the comfort a woman feels in a companion of her own sex. Oh, I can quite understand your objections to Harriet Smith. She's not quite the superior young woman one would expect Emma's friend to be. No, hardly. But on the other hand, Emma will want to see her better informed. And that will be an inducement to a course of reading and study on her own account. Emma has been meaning to read and study more ever since she was 12 years old, Mrs. Weston. And she will never submit to anything that requires industry or patience. You are always so hard on her, poor girl. Only in her own interests, because everybody else is too indulgent. Emma is spoiled by being the cleverest in her family. Perhaps. Well, my brother is married to her sister, so I am in a position to know. Oh, but Isabella is a Ah, quite... yes. But all their childhood... Emma was able to outshine poor Isabella, despite the difference in their years. And ever since their mother died, Emma has been the true mistress of this house and of you all. There. Now, is that not the honest truth? Oh, dear. Perhaps there is some truth in it, yes. But with all Emma's little faults, she has an excellent character, Mr. Knightley. Indeed. That's why I feel so much concern on her behalf. See, this youthful assurance of hers leaves her dangerously susceptible to flattery. And Harriet Smith, I suspect, is by nature a flatterer. Oh, an unintention. So much the worse for her. She clearly knows nothing and looks up to Emma as knowing everything. And as for Harriet, Hartfield and its mistress will merely put her out of conceit with all the places to which she belongs. She will grow just refined enough to be uncomfortable in the company of her former friends and acquaintances, and that is all. You mark my words. Two parlours. Two very good parlours they have, Miss Woodhouse. And an upper maid who has lived with them 25 years. So Mrs. Martin said. Oh, and eight cows. Indeed. Two Aldenies and one very pretty little Welsh cow. Oh, so pretty, Miss Woodhouse, she was really. I doted on her. In fact, the Miss Martins used to say she should be called my cow. Was that not kind of them? Very kind. And is there no Mr. Martin? You've made no mention of him. Oh, have I not? Oh, yes, there is. And he is very kind, too, and extremely highly thought of, I believe. Oh, 
Miss Woodhouse, how beautiful that is. This? Oh, this is just an old chair seat I began once and then set aside. I had meant to work a whole set for the dining room, but got no further than this one. Oh, it is quite exquisite. You like it? Oh, I do. Oh, but then you're so clever. Oh, nonsense. This Mr. Martin, what manner of man is he? Is he a man of information? Information, Miss Woodhouse? I mean, does he read? Oh, yes, certainly. There's always an agricultural report on the window seat, always. I mean, does he read for pleasure and improvement? Oh, yes. Often in the evenings he would read us aloud some pieces from elegant extracts. Oh. And I know he has read The Vicar of Wakefield, Miss Woodhouse. He told me so himself. But I'm afraid he never heard of such stories as The Romance of the Forest or The Children of the Abbey. But he's determined to get them as soon as he can. Well, I see you have made a start anyway. But now, Harriet, today is my day for visiting the poor. Would you like to join me? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, may I? Indeed you may. I do dislike walking by myself. Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. What style of man is this, Mr. Martin? His appearance, I mean. Oh, he is not handsome, Miss Woodhouse. Not at all. At least I did not think so at first. I see. Oh, may I? Oh, please do. And what age would you take him to be? He was four and twenty on the 8th of June, Miss Woodhouse. Only four and twenty? Yes, his birthday is just a fortnight and a day before mine. Is that not strange? But those girls, the Miss Martins, what age are they then? I think the elder one is just a year younger than her brother, Miss Woodhouse. And the younger Then the is... Mr. Martin you have been speaking of is their brother and not their father, is that right? Oh, yes, Miss Woodhouse. Their father has been dead some years. Is it not sad? Yes, very sad. But I, I've heard he was a very fine man, Miss Woodhouse. Everyone speaks well of him. I've no doubt. And Robert greatly resembles him in many ways, so I'm told. Mr. Martin, I should say. Emma, Emma, my dear child. You're not thinking of going out walking, I hope, at this time of year. Yes, Father, I am. And Harriet has kindly consented to come with me. But my dear, is that wise? Oh, dear, dear. Now, please, Mrs. Penny, you will take cold. Now, look after yourself, do, and I will be back again next week. Thank you, Miss Woodhouse. Mr. Martin. So I realised. It was quite by chance he came this way. He has this very day come into town for a copy of the Romance of the Forest. Now, Miss Woodhouse, is he like what you expected? Well, Harriet, he is plain, certainly. Exceedingly plain. Do you think so? And to be honest, I must confess I had expected to see something more of the gentleman in his appearance. Yes, I... I suppose he has not the air of Mr. Knightley. Mr. Knightley? Oh, no, he is not so much a gentleman as Mr. Knightley, I do admit. Oh, poor Mr. Martin. Let us not compare him with Mr. Knightley. That is a little hard. But with Mr. Weston, say, or Mr. Elton. Has he their manner of speaking, would you say, or bearing? But Mr. Weston is nearly an old man, surely. I mean, he must be over 40. Well, Mr. Elton, then. Try comparing him in your mind's eye with Mr. Elton, Harriet, and you will see at once what I mean. Yes. Yes, I suppose I do. But, Miss Woodhouse, Mr. Elton is a clergyman. Miss Woodhouse, sir. If he gave me to understand that you wished to see me. Oh. Oh, very well then, sir. If you would just wait a moment. Ye have heard them sweetly sing and seen them in a round. Each. Yes. Each virgin, like a spring, with honeysuckle. Miss Woodhouse, Mr. Elton is here. Mr. Elton? Oh, well, show him in, Williams. Oh, excuse me one moment, Harriet. Oh, very well, Miss Woodhouse. 
Hamilton, what a pleasant surprise. But I thought... Come in, come in. Uh, but you have company. I won't disturb you. Oh, Harriet and I were just passing the time. We should be glad of a little company. Oh, well, if you're quite sure... Oh, I find Harriet a quite invaluable companion and so accomplished. This table mat, for example, is it not rather fine? Very fine. Exceedingly fine, in fact. She has a, a natural taste in such matters, I think. Do you not agree? Oh, she has indeed. Undoubtedly she has. In fact, she has improved greatly under your care, in my opinion. Very greatly. You really think so, Mr. Elton? I do indeed. You have made her graceful and easy. She always had beauty. Now she has... She never wanted with sweetness of temper and artlessness, but I think I have given her a little decision of character as well. Exactly so. That is what immediately strikes one. You have a great understanding of such matters, Miss Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr. Elton. There. Is that not a charming picture? Charming. Charming. She has no notion we are observing her. Quite, quite charming. What would I not give for a portrait of her as she sits there at this moment? Hmm, Mr. Elton? Yes. What a subject she would make for your pencil, Miss Woodhouse. For mine? Yes, yours. Oh, you're too modest. Mrs. Weston has shown me the likeness you made of her, and may I be permitted to say I think it quite admirable. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Elton. Not at all. I must admit, at one time I did have quite a passion for taking likenesses, but for one reason or another I gave it up. Then let me entreat you to try your charming talent once more on Miss Smith. Oh, Mr. Elton. I do beg of you, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, shall I then? Shall I? I confess that was truly not on my mind when I spoke. Please, please. It would be a sheer delight. Very well then, Mr. Elton. If the result is disaster, the fault shall be yours. Harriet, come here one moment. Have you ever had your likeness drawn? Oh, goodness. Oh, no, never, Miss Woodhouse. Very well. Come and sit here, exactly as you were, and do keep your position while I fetch my sketching board. Mr. Elton, do not let her move. She is in your command. You have my permission to use force if need be. You're certainly fortunate to have such a talented friend as Miss Woodhouse, Miss Smith. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, you are very proficient with your needle. Oh, yes, sir. What is that you're reading? It is a book, sir. Oh. A book of poems. Poems? Well, they are not mine, sir. Leastways, I mean, the book is not mine. It belongs to Miss Woodhouse. It is so long since I last drew a likeness that I do hope my hand has not lost what little skill it had. Now, Harriet, your cap. Oh, my hair, Miss Woodhouse. Your hair is quite delightful. Now, if I place myself here... Allow me. Thank you. And now, Harriet, your head a little higher, please. And a little more to your right. There, that is exactly right. Now, quite still, please. An exquisite choice of position. Quite admirable. Oh, am, am I standing in your light? I do beg your pardon. Uh, one moment. The folds of the skirt. Oh, my skirt, Miss Woodhouse. How was it? Oh, no, no, do not move. Mr. Elton, if you'll be so kind. Oh, oh yes, Miss Woodhouse. The folds of the skirt, could you rearrange them somewhat? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Permit me. Harriet, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Woodhouse. Well, I declare, Mr. Elton, you make such a gallant figure kneeling there at her feet that I have half a mind to include you in my picture. Oh, no, really, Miss Woodhouse, no. Oh, it is all right, Mr. Elton. I was not serious. Perhaps 
perhaps you would be good enough to entertain us with a reading while we work, Mr. Elton. Oh, delighted, of course. Delighted. If you'd really care for it, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, we should greatly welcome it, should we not, Harriet? Oh, it would be quite delightful, Miss Woodhouse. Harriet has a book of verses there. Yes, of course. Choose what you will. Do sit down, Mr. Elton. Thank you. A sweet disorder of the dress kindles in clothes a wantonness, a lawn about the shoulders thrown into a fine distraction. This same flower, the flower An erring lace which here and tomorrow there will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a-getting, the sooner will his race be run, and nearer he's to setting. That age is best, which is the first, when youth Please, and Mr. blood Hussie. are warmer. Which is but like, being spent, not like. the worst but and worst times still succeed the former. The time. Oh, Harriet, my poor May I be permitted girl. to see, Miss Woodhouse? Oh, you may, Mr. Elton, but I fear I have not done the subject justice. I am most dissatisfied. Oh, but in my opinion, you have. Oh, yes, indeed, you have. Thank you, Mr. Elton. Now, Harriet, you must run home at once to Mrs. Goddard. She will wonder what has happened yes. to you. Oh, I cannot for the moment, Miss Woodhouse. My foot has quite gone to sleep. Well, Mr. Elton will take you as soon as you are ready, I'm a sure. charming, quite delightful thing. Mr. Elton? You will escort Miss Smith home, will you not? Oh, yes, of course, Miss Woodhouse. Yes. You know, you call the expression of the eye most admirably. May I be permitted to congratulate you? Well, thank you, Mr. Elton, for being so kind and reading so beautifully. You have such a fine, clear delivery. Thank you. Goodbye. Mrs. Goddard, I do beg your pardon, but truly, the fault was not mine. I'm sorry you did not come sooner, my dear. I've had a visitor, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin came here? He did, not half an hour since. But for what reason, Mrs. Goddard? Well, to see you, of course. To see me? Oh, goodness gracious. However, he left this for you. Thank you, Mrs. Goddard. Well, child, are you not going to open it? I think first I will go upstairs and take off my bonnet, Mrs. Goddard, if you don't mind. You've certainly caught her beauty, Emma, dear. You've made her too tall, Emma. Oh, I knew I should never please Mr. Knightley. I never said it didn't please me. I merely said that the appearance of height is not correct. I disagree with you, Mr. Knightley. To me, it gives exactly the true impression of Miss Smith's height. Exactly so. Oh, it's very pretty. Very prettily done, indeed. The only criticism I have to make is that she appears to be sitting out of doors. Well, that was my intention, Papa. That is the object of the tree in the background. Excellently sketched in, too. I greatly like the tree. It is supposed to be a summer day. A warm day in summer. Yes, but even so, my dear, only a shawl. In my opinion, it is never wise to sit outside so lightly clad. It's very prettily drawn, but then your drawings always are. Thank you, Papa. I think it a most happy notion myself to have placed Miss Smith outside like that. It suits the, the simplicity of her character, does it not? Yes, perhaps. Ah, it is no use appealing to Mr. Knightley, Mr. Elton. He is only too worried that any praise, however slight or ill-merited, might turn my head. Oh, come, Emma, that's unfair. Well, I think it altogether admirable. I cannot take my eyes off it. Well, the subject's a very charming one, I grant you. Mr. Knightley, what is this? You have given praise, though only to the sitter, of course. That I fully appreciate. I wonder how you would exist, Emma, if you didn't have somebody like me to tea. Well... I should like to see it framed and hanging somewhere where I could look upon it from my fireside chair. Oh, yes, Yes, that would give me the greatest pleasure. Then let me recommend that it be delivered to somebody in London, for there's no one in Highbury fit for such work. Oh, quite so. It should be properly done by somebody who understands the art. 
Well, if I might be entrusted with such a delicate commission, it would give me the greatest pleasure in the world. I do assure you, Mr. Woodhouse. A capital suggestion. You mean that you would go specially to London, but that would take up the whole of your day. I should think it an honour. Oh, no, no, I cannot endure the Yes, thought. yes, my dear, Mr. Elton will do it. I have no engagement tomorrow. Well, I am quite overwhelmed. At what time would you wish to start, Mr. Elton? I will pack it myself most carefully and bring it round. No, 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 my dear, we can't have you walking out in the mornings at this time of year. No, Elton will call for it, won't you? Of course, Mr. Woodhouse. It would give me the greatest pleasure. Thank you, dear boy, thank you. Harriet! Miss Woodhouse, forgive me for calling on you so early, but this letter was waiting for me when I got home yesterday. From Mr. Martin. From Mr. Martin? Well, then I've no doubt of its being a private matter, Harriet. It is a proposal of marriage. Upon my word, the young man is determined to connect himself well, if he can. Oh, read it, Miss Woodhouse, please. I did not like to disturb you last night when I knew you had company. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, I've been in such a state of mind. Whoever would have thought that Mr. Martin could entertain such feelings? And for me? Hmm. It's quite a good letter. Not at all badly phrased. Oh, so what should I do, Miss Woodhouse? Do? Well, you must answer it, of course. At once. Oh, yes, but what shall I say? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, do please advise me. No, no, Harriet, that you must do for yourself. You will express yourself very properly, I am sure. Yes, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, but you are much more knowledgeable in these matters, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, you must help me. Very well, then. First, you must tell him that you are deeply sensible of the great honour he has done you, and that you have no desire in the world to cause him pain. You need not be prompted to write with the appearance of too much sorrow for his disappointment. You mean I should refuse him? Harriet, dear, I had no notion you wished me to advise you as to the purpose of your answer. I thought you merely wanted help with the wording. I am sorry. I have quite misunderstood you. Am I to take it that you mean to return a favourable answer? Is that right? Oh, no, Miss Woodhouse. Well, at least not if you do not think so. Well, Harriet, my dear girl, you really must make up your own mind on such an important matter. Yes, uh, I suppose I must. If you are quite convinced that Mr. Martin is the handsomest, finest, most elegant man you have ever met, then you need be in no doubt whatsoever. On the other hand... If there is someone else with whom he compares unfavorably in, say, education and understanding, then I think you should hesitate. In fact, Harriet, dear, as a general rule, I consider that if a woman has even a shadow of doubt in her mind as to whether or not she should say yes, she should most assuredly say no. Perhaps you are right, Miss Woodhouse. But do not think that I wish to influence you in any way. The decision must be yours. Well, if you will not give me your opinion, I, I suppose I must make up my own mind. Yes, Harriet, I'm very much afraid you must. Well? I have almost determined to refuse him. I shall say no. Oh, Harriet. Do you think I'm right, Miss Woodhouse? Of course you're right. Oh, Harriet, I'm so glad you've decided the way you have, because now there will be no need for us to give up our friendship. Oh, give up our friendship? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, I wouldn't give up that for anything in the world. We'll not give it up entirely, of course, but there would have been difficulties, Harriet, dear, would there not? Difficulties, Miss Woodhouse? And now there need be none. 
Oh, Harriet, I'm so happy. And now there only remains to write the letter. Oh, yes. No. No, you shall do it. It shall be your thoughts expressed in your own words. Oh, yes, Miss Woodhouse. Whatever shall I say? Just say, dear Mr. Martin, though I am deeply sensible of the great honour you have done me, I very much regret to say that my answer must be etc., etc. Dear Mr. Martin, <laughs>